Hi everybody, my name is Lisa, this is my corner, you're very welcome and in here is a safe place to talk about art, to talk about materials, to talk about books, to talk about whatever I like because I run this tiny universe. So I've sort of been making a list of new things I've bought, some books I've bought and some stuff that I'm never buying again and I also owe somebody an enormous apology but that's a little bit further down the line so if you like the drama <laughs> stay tuned okay so today i'm going to start with what i have bought so first out of the traps is this it's a bit big isn't it it's it's not a deck chair i promise you it's a table easel, an easel for one's tabletop, and it was £15 from the works. I've been looking at this for a while. Let's face it, this is cheap as chips. This is a right old bit of plywood, some glue, spit and a prayer, and I hope it all stays together. It's so flimsy. But, but, for my purposes, it's just fine, because... Whatever I'd been using before, I, I found myself standing up to look down at it and doing all kinds of strange things to my back. So it was only £15, if I've said that before, I'll say it again. And uh, shall we see how far I get? So I use it in addition to this one, which was £49, £19 from Lidl. So I am very, shall we say, prudent. Careful. Careful with them. Um, and you know what? Maybe I should splash out a little bit more money because of the ergonomics of it, particularly that, because I can't really alter the height. I'll put it on my list of things to think about and we'll see how things go. Um, in the bought range, listen, there's the general top, oh, we'll sort this out. There is the general topping up of things that have run out and they've been oil paints. I have been falling back in love with oil paints. Now there's something like down here. Yes. I replaced, yes, I replaced a couple of colours and I just thought, let's see another brand. Let's, let's test run it and see what it looks like. So it's Van Gogh. I think this is by Royal Talons. Yes, it is. It's Royal Talons. It's their sap green. I have another one. I inadvertently bought another alizarin crimson permanent, Madder Lake Deep. Isn't Madder? Rose Madder is a plant, isn't it, that they extract that red from, that, that crimsony red? I'll check. So I got these two, I think they were eight, nine pounds each. They're about the same price as the Winds of Newton. That, for a green, has a lovely, lovely opacity. It's very nice. It's nice and rich. So it's got three pluses. I think it, it's meant to be a little bit translucent. Listen, I'm not going to pretend that I understand all the hieroglyphics. I'm not. I'm just not that girl. But I found it very... Really lovely pigment. Nice and opaque. And again, th but listen, the alizarin was slightly different from the Winsor Newton that I've been buying, that I have, it's deeper. You know, it's like a richer ruby, ruby red. So there's those. The more I use them, the more I'll report back that I like them. And I am really, really loving, loving the oils. It's been such a long time, but the thing of it is, because my, my little space here isn't well ventilated, Using the terps, using all of that, the house stinks. I, I my my little respiratory tract can't handle it. So I suppose I'll confine it to those months that I can have all. I've got lots of windows here, so I can ventilate quite happily and have the back door open. I don't want the house smelling like a. I don't know what to describe it as. I don't know if I've mentioned this stuff. It's liquid, but fine detail. So it's like I suppose. A thinner version of its Big Brother liquid original. 
So as it says on the tin, it's for fine detail. Yeah, look at that. Very, as opposed to this jelly consistency. Love it. Again, it increases, speeds up that drying time. I bought a Winsor Newton oil colour gloss. And right, that's deceptively, look, that's deceptively water. It's not gloopy, but it does the trick. I did a painting for a friend and it and it sealed it beautifully. I get but um you have to work quick. You have to work quick. I'm gonna have to, that's something we're gonna have to work on is sealing and finishing oil paintings. See, I don't know whether it needed two coats or not, but because I kind of whacked it out. I just put one coat on it. So they they were about eight pounds, they're all about eight pounds each. These sizes suit me because uh, I do smaller, I don't do massive enormous pieces. So that's just about right for me. It's a massive, massive blue bot. Go away. I'll go for him. I will. And another pet peeve about the summer is the, the insect life. Anyway, we'll ignore him on the never buy again list. And this has been a revelation. Um, tightness with the old money. I'm starting to see why it's a bad idea in, in some respects for some materials. Just wait a second, I, have to, I just have to deal with this. Hi. Right, so cheap art materials. What I've discovered quite inadvertently was the following. Well, it had been something I'd noticed, but I ignored it. And I thought, sure, it'll do, it'll be grand. Well, it's not. Talk about sketchbooks. Talking about this in particular is a very um, affordable from the works are somewhere like it you know their is it their crawford line that they do so this was a sketchbook hardback sketchbook that i started earlier in the year to do little studies and sketches in um yeah, i think i've shown you these before such as this and two and this but then i've been anyway and pencil studies I'm just going to ignore it, okay? Now, the other thing I ignored was the fact that the nib of a sharp pencil It's not what you want, is it? And it was starting to annoy me. So I thought I'd upgrade. By about five pounds. <laughs> this is uh, it's a Winsor & Newton. I think I got it in Hobbycraft. I think it was £8.50. The difference... Night to day. Phenomena. Example this. The blend. When when I it's so easy to blend, there's a beautiful smooth blend, but I found with the cheap paper, and let's face it, this really isn't much better than butcher's paper, newsprint, honestly. The graphite from the pencil would sort of build up a, a layer, and after a certain point you weren't able to really move that stuff around so i was starting to just get really 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 frustrated i thought i'd buy something give it a go um and I, I don't regret it at all so i'm never buying cheap sketchbooks to use I'll, I'll use this for instance to just paste in little gouache sketches and things i'm not gonna toss this in the bin there is stuff in it that i kind of like but like for instance pleased with that that's with a sepia fountain pen from gosh that's back in january actually the sepia pen was from pentel and i was following part of the new masters academy course so it didn't really matter about the quality of the paper because they were just rough sketches but this yeah game changer maybe the next step up because like I've said on previous videos, what I'm trying to do is just use the materials that I have 
and not keep buying and duplicating. So finish one sketchbook, go on to the next. And, you know, it keeps, it, it keeps me focused on development themes, perhaps areas that I need to work harder at. Than, rather than have everything scattered to the four winds, I have everything in one place dated. Oh, here we are. Dated. So, yeah, there's that. So they're the only really never buy agains. Next. Huge apology. Massive, massive apology. Hang on. And that apology is owed to Karen Dash. I shall elaborate. A couple of videos back. A couple of videos back, I talked about this little purchase, which is Karen Dash really basic because I am basic uh little one two three I think there's six or seven in here there's a blue missing this I wouldn't say I slated it or coated it but it certainly left me feeling a bit was you know what's the big deal don't get it not for me and said I I couldn't see where it would fit in what I do Scroll forwards a couple of months, total change of heart, total. And this is the for why. So here's the for why. Now, I don't know if I understand that much about oil pastels, but I had some rubbish ones basically kept for quite some time in all the wrong conditions. Just, so th I suppose they harden, I suppose they lose their, their uh, richness. It shouldn't be in there. But... I'd seen somebody doing oil pastel portraits and thought, wow, that looks luscious. Got these out. And it was like using a stone, basically, an old stone. However, inspiration struck. I thought, ooh, let's see how they, do these work with these? Fabulous. Fabulous, beautiful. Suddenly get it. It's a sudden revelation. So then, so then, I did something else. Um, I saw this exercise, so an Australian YouTuber, she's an artist, um, had taped down, I think it was six A3 papers, A3 pieces of multimedia paper, and then just went for it. She threw everything at it. She was throwing acrylics. She had like a, it was such fun, squeezy bottles full of colour, just lashing it down and then laying layer upon layer she was sort of worked with the same anyway listen i'll link it if i can find it huge fun so i thought i'll do that that looks great and i took as an inspiration monet's lilies oh yeah so once she'd done everything took them all out and started to chop them up into squares and created well listen this was my my version of it okay and they create this sort of abstracted gloriousness the layers and layers of color and then i sort of started to be a bit more uh i don't know what you'd call it but i put down actual lilies i started to, to sort of like with a paintbrush flick on <sighs> the alizarin crimson campion orange but then what she did was to get her caran dashes and start to do this sort of business layering even more shapes designs layers of color so what i did here was trace around the lily pads and then i ran out and bought more yes i did i bought two two four six eight. i bought more than the lovely jade greens and purples and periwinkles some sepias, some fleshy ochres, dark grey, uh, yellows. Yeah. I went a bit wild. This, this was all 25 quid. And in my swatch book. Yeah, they're in here somewhere. I'm so organised I actually get lost. That was the colour palette that I chose. 
and I've loved them. I have fallen in love. My eyes have seen the light. They're creamy. They're so vibrant, particularly against that dark background, background. They're just gorgeous. So I've started putting them into my, my gouache landscapes. Listen, this fella hasn't been redeemed yet, the etcher sketch, but I'm going to use it. I'm going to finish it up as is my, as my motto. Use it up! So I've been starting to put the Caran d'Ache, just very, just tracing it, scratching it literally over the surface. So you know what? This really heavy paper comes into its own with that. Just lightly scratching it across the sea to get the scumbled effect of sort of like sparkling light and I've done it somewhere else in here as well it's fascinating more lilies so Karen Dash my humblest apologies these are a wonderful invention Karen Dash Neil Colour Aquarell what can I say thank you for investing them and I'm sorry that I was such a smart ass and thought thought I knew it all because obviously I don't. So on the I'm not sure about them never buy again list are these guys. Coloured markers. So I watch people as I do. I watch a lot of YouTube, a lot of art YouTube channels and I see people doing breathtaking stuff with these and I can't. Is the bottom line so maybe i've got a karen dash situation with them i just haven't found the moment for me and them to become one <laughs> to turn into bodies um i think the skills you need for them are very very unique um i think it takes a lot of work i have to remind myself now with youtube art, art youtubers they are infinitely more skilled. They have so much more experience with all, all sorts of different materials. And I've got to stop beating myself up and thinking, you shouldn't be able to do that because I can't, because I, I don't know how to. I've never, I've never had specific training, so what am I supposed to do? But I can but try. I think it may be slow progress with them, but like, like I've said, like Karen Dash, maybe their moment will come. Who knows? But I love the effect. I love the way they look. Uh, Sarah Burns. I'm sure if you watch YouTube or YouTube, you'll know who Sarah Burns is. If not, I'll put, I'll put a picture below. And she does landscapes of where she lives in Scotland. And she did a seascape using... Uh, she just made it look effortless. It was sparkling. It was vibrant. It was just gorgeous. She seems to have a capacity to see colour and translate it back onto the page. Which seems to be a real trick. So these, I think they're £11. £11 on Amazon. We'll see how we go. And of course, if you don't use them, they run out and you have to replace them. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Our markers. Next. Books. So I've only bought two. Um... The first one is Figure Drawing by Jake Spicer. I bought it on Kindle for two ninety nine. Now that might sound like a weird idea for an instruction book, but let me tell you, it was two ninety nine on Kindle. Um, but here's the thing, and I and I'll demonstrate it with my next book as well. Actually, I've got a better thing. This I found in a charity shop. It's wonderful. It's an anatomy drawing for the artist. It's massive. It's really, really it's very different. Um, it's a right old faff when I'm using it. So it looks like three pounds. What are you gonna do? You're not gonna walk away from it. It's wonderful. On the Kindle, my Kindle, if you know anything about Kindle, so it sits here on my desk. I look at it, flick through it, I can expand, I can do I love it. For me, it's much, much easier. Uh, I don't have a huge amount of space, so this fits in beautifully. Um, I can bookmark things. I can swizz around between pages. I love it. Anyway, 
this I think is a very very new book I think this was only published this year um so I have decided figure drawing would be a new avenue it's a new skill it's it I think it really enhances your understanding of of looking at objects what are you looking at how to simplify an object how to break it down and that's what this book the contents are basically the materials and then um the different skills in drawing mark making using your pens and pencils and things like that i'm still working my way through it i haven't i've only got it a few weeks so um it's i'm familiarizing myself with it yeah he talks about learning to see and that's that is really important seeing edges seeing shapes breaking things down contrasting um and then light and shadow putting the form on something using light using contrast uh he also <clears throat> there's a lot there's freeing up exercises as well, which I which I always enjoy. So there's a lot in here. It's it's very detailed. It's a lot, <laughs> and because I've got sort of I don't know about I think sometimes for me concentration and following a chrono chron chronological or step-by-step step thing is it's not my strongest suit but I'm kind of taking out of it what I want because I, I it is it's a lot so every day I start every day doing some exercises out of here finding figures negative spaces things like that so if you're offended by bombs look away now that really pleased really pleased with that the ability to foreshorten a, a shape the bum is gone so you can look back <laughs> yeah i found this wonderful <clears throat> i'm using it in conjunction with that the chariot shop one as well just for a bit close up but i've i've really enjoyed having it on the kindle um and he, he looks as well at the work of previous artists one of my favourites, what's her name? I wrote it down somewhere. It's Kathy Kollowitz, German lady who did sculpture as well. But her drawings, her life drawings are amazing. Very expressionistic. I'll put her name down below, insert her name. And if you go and take a look at her things, she's mad. Her diaries actually as well. Her son died in the First World War and her diaries and then her sculptures based on the grief of a mother are so moving. But yeah, so it's all put in a context. And yes, I'm enjoying it. So that's Jake Spicer, figure drawing. Um, I've enjoyed it. I'll give it a 10 out of 10. And it's 10 out of 10 because I can use it on my Kindle as well. So there's that. Next. This is a beauty. This this is a stunner. And this was an internet made me buy it book. Now if you want to contrast to the Kindle. This. John Singer Sargent. The only word I can use is ravishing. Ravishing. If this man wasn't a predecessor, grandfather of Impressionism, I don't know who was. Turner, yes, definitely. That first sort of de de deconstruction of light. Is that the word? I don't know. I'm just making words up now. But look at that. Look at this lady. Oh, my word. And her tiny Edwardian waist. And the colours just singing off the canvas. Um, and my own personal favourite, I don't know, of course we all know the scandal of Madame X or the naughtiness I don't think he knew what he was doing when he painted it about how controversial it was, but basically this to our modern eyes 
that is nothing more than a, be a beautiful portrait of a woman in her prime, her skin glowing against a beautifully cut gown, uh, very self-possessed, very self-assured, gorgeous, bare-shouldered. I mean, what's the issue? Well, in the original, the strap of this, one of the straps of the evening gown was laid suggestively across her shoulder, caused uproar. It was, um, it was in the Parisian salon, it was in the Parisian, so it's Madame, Madame X, her real name is Madame Pierre Goudreau, and she, I don't know if she was a society lady, right, okay, look, that's the original. And you can see the strap of her evening gown laid over. Basically, he had to leave Paris after this was exhibited. He, and that's why he ended up in London. Because of a, an evening gown. It's so wild. If it was only to see what Lucy and Freud did, not 50 years later. It's, it's mad. But her skin glows. And that's what he did. He made his, he made his sitters. The light made them look divine and it seemed to be like just a few hints of a brush stroke the energy but every i mean every brush stroke must have been thought about but they look so careless and there seems to be a kind of a, a theme with the palette of this lilac these pinks these cool off whites uh creamy creamy skin flawless healthy skin and faces and dark darker so I'll, I'll stop rambling but this was written by carter ratcliffe i got it for 20 pounds on ebay it was published 1982 in new york by abville publishing if you want to go and look for it i that that's the cheapest i found it at was 20 pounds i've seen it also as high as 45 but the condition obviously reflects the price you know i'm going to examine just look and enjoy the text is great in it it's very um it's very factual it's absorbing it's his life it's obviously the book is mainly about the paintings there are close-ups there are zoom-ins i didn't know he was a war artist he went to the front towards the end of the world of world war ii and captured the misery. Just a few words. Soldiers exhausted, broken down. His quick sketches even. Those were his quick sketches. Okay, so apart from Madame X, these two beauties. Carnation Lily, Lily Rose. Look at the light, the flowers, the lanterns. It was twilight on, on a summer's evening. A romantic, idealised version of Edward in England, where most children had rickets. <laughs> uh, mother was on the gin and everybody worked down a mine. Yes, he captured a particular... My camera's doing strange things but never mind so to finish john singer sergeant idealized victorian edwardian late victorian edwardian society beautiful ladies beautiful mastery of color and light um i'm really enjoying it that's everything from here from the corner for this month um if you're a new subscriber you're very welcome it's lovely to have you here tell your friends um, thank you for joining me. Do like, ring bells, notifications, leave me a comment. Do you like John? Who's your, who's your favourite painter? I'm sure people think this is um, Chocolate Box or whatever. He seems to be having some sort of a new, he's come, I think he's come back into Vogue. I think there was a big exhibition at the Tate a couple of years ago before Covid. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't get to see it, but I'm sure there'll be something else on. So that's everything. Have a wonderful month. June is upon us. The birds are squabbling in the trees. The light's beautiful. Enjoy, enjoy. 
and uh, come back and see me again soon. So bye for now.